How did you uh, first get started with Lutosławski's music? What attracted you? I cannot recall the first moment I heard his music, but I, I think that for most of us, when we hear his music for the first time or first times, um, we realize that despite the complexity of it, there's something very direct and, and approachable. And he's playing with the psychology of the, the listener, i.e. assuming that somebody's hearing this music, which is quite a nice starting point for, for a composer. You feel, as a listener, straight away that, that this music is in, in dialogue with you. It's not something that you kind of perceive from distance. Um, it's something that, that allows you to participate. When did you first meet him and how did you start to work together? Well, I saw him a few times in Helsinki. He, he, he came to the Sibelius Academy and, and talked about his work and, and conducted his music and so on and so forth. And I was a student at the time, so I didn't have the nerve to go, go and talk to him. We met for the first time later in the 80s. Uh, um, I was asked to do a, a Lodzowski weekend with him in order to prepare the programs and, and decide who conducts what. I went to see him in Switzerland. He was conducting in Bern, Switzerland at the time, and, and we had lunch and started talking. And I'm sure you have the same experience, that you, you start talking about something which is supposed to be the topic of the day, and then the conversation kind of veers off to all kinds of directions. And, and finally, you, you realize that you have, to, you, you have spent several hours with this man talking about everything under the sun and come out of the meeting much enriched and, yes. and, and inspired. He'd been talking to the orchestra for a long time and we asked him finally in 1989 Seriously, you know, we'll make a commission for you. And he said something like, well, I'd love to write you a piece, but I don't know when I'll have the right idea. It might be many years. So let's don't make a contract or talk about money. And then three years pass, and then he runs into you. That's one of my, my, my fondest memories, actually. I, I was in Stockholm, and, and he came to Stockholm. Uh, he conducted the Stockholm Philharmonic, and he was given the gold medal of the Philharmonic Society in, in, in Stockholm and, and there was a dinner afterwards which I attended and, and during the dinner Lutosławski says, well, um, you know, as a Beck, I'm conducting a concert with your orchestra in Los Angeles um, next spring and, and I was just wondering whether you would be very upset if I changed the program a little bit <laughs> and, and I said, well, I don't see why, why I should be, so, so what, what, what do you want to change? And he said, you know, I finished this little symphony and I'm wondering if, if you could play it. And I nearly fainted, of course, <laughs> because this is the mythical fourth symphony that we had been discussing for such a long time. And, and I just storm off um, the room and I, I tried to find the, the closest phone and call Ernest Fleischmann, who was running the LA Philharmonic at the time. And I, I finally reached him and I say, Ernest, Prepare the contract, prepare everything. Uh, you know, Vito said that he has a new symphony. And Ernest said, calm down, it's okay. It's all right, I'll take care of the paperwork. And, <laughs> and just tell Vito that, that we are thrilled. And, and then I go back to the room where they are finishing dessert and, and, and Vito is really amused by my excitement. And I'm all <laughs> sweating and <laughs> kind of... <laughs> <laughs> uh, great, great memory. You're pairing his music with French composers, with Debussy and Ravel, and this is a natural pairing that people have observed for a long time, how, what, what there is that is somehow French about his music, but what is French about his music? Well, he, he himself 
when discussing pairings, he, he always came up with Debussy and Ravel. And, and of course, um, his music is essentially very different. Um, but there's something, especially if you think of Ravel, the same kind of perfection of, of the craft, the same kind of uh, reluctance to release anything that is not perfectly honed and perfectly polished and, and kind of um, watertight. Mm -hmm. There's something in, in the spirit that is very similar. And maybe in the sound also, the orchestral sound world is very, is very not German. It comes very much, don't you think, from the Rimsky-Korsakov, Debussy, Ravel, even Stravinsky side of music history. Absolutely. It's the, it's the third, third way. Of course, they, there's, a, there's a huge Bartok influence early on. But of course, Bartok himself is a hybrid. Yes. Uh, and, and I think Witold was influenced by late Bartok much more than early Bartok, and therefore, um, again, it's the third way. Very rarely um, does he think in a sort of four-part Zatz, as the Germans used to. <laughs> Even um, Berg and Weber and Schoenberg right. to some degree. Right. I mean, they never uh, step, stepped outside the concept completely. He, he doesn't think that way. He, the, the, it, it's a fundamentally different approach. single composer series or single composer in context series are, are such a good format for you and the Philharmonia? And the audience. Um, I think what happens is that, of course, from us performers' point of view, um, you play a lot of music by, by one composer and, and you learn the language in a way. Mm. Uh, and, and you, you can then free your mind from trying to understand what's going on uh, and, and use that capacity on the actual performance. When you reach that freedom and, and you don't no longer have, have to be worried about getting it right or, or you know, kind of speaking it correctly, um, there's so much more freedom. The audience, they feel the same process, you know, at the beginning you, you, you're trying to kind of understand and, and, and learn to navigate the, the syntax. And then at the end, you speak it, you understand it. Mm -hmm. And that's also liberating. You sit there and, and you absolutely get it. At the end, you feel like you, not only have you learned something, but you experienced something that you wouldn't have otherwise. <laughs> 